Today we delve into a pivotal moment in recent history, the 9-11's attacks. This event, one that shook the world to its core, remains a subject of deep interest and intense scrutiny even after two decades. The attacks of September 11, 2001, were not just a tragedy for the United States, but a defining moment that changed the course of history for the entire world. The 9-11 attacks are not just a chapter of history, but a series of questions, a mystery that has left many puzzled, intrigued, and seeking answers. It's a tale of horror and heroism, of tragedy and resilience. It's a story that has been told and retold, studied and scrutinized, yet continues to captivate and confound us. The events of that fateful day left an indelible mark on the world. We witnessed the sheer magnitude of human destructiveness, but also the immense capacity for courage, compassion, and unity. The global impact of the 9-11's attacks was far-reaching, influencing international relations, geopolitical dynamics, and national security policies across the globe. The attacks also led to significant changes in various sectors, from aviation to intelligence, and even affected our daily lives. They shaped the way we perceive security, freedom, and our own vulnerabilities. They forced us to confront harsh realities and tough questions about terrorism, conflict, and the fragility of peace. As we embark on this exploration, we'll delve into the heart of the matter, dissecting the most curious history questions people have about the 9-11 attacks. We'll unravel the events leading up to the attacks, the motivations behind them, and the world's reaction. We'll examine the immediate and long-term consequences, and how these events changed the world as we knew it. So, fasten your seatbelts and brace yourself for a journey through time and history. Prepare to delve deep, to question, to reflect, and to understand. Because history is not just about the past, it's about the present, the future, and the lessons we learn. Now let's transport ourselves back to the turn of the century. In order to understand the events of 9-11s, we must first look at the world in which they occurred. The late 20th century was a time of significant geopolitical change. The Cold War had ended, and the United States emerged as the world's sole superpower. However, beneath the surface of this new world order, tensions were brewing. In the Middle East, decades of political instability and conflict had given rise to a new form of terrorism, rooted in extremist interpretations of Islam. These groups such as Al-Qaeda harbored deep resentment towards the West, particularly the United States, for its perceived interference in the region. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, America was enjoying a period of relative peace and prosperity, the economy was booming, and the threat of global conflict seemed a distant memory. However, this sense of security was about to be shattered. In the years leading up to 9-11, there were several key events that set the stage for the attacks. The 1993 World Trade Center bombing was a chilling precursor, a stark warning of the deadly intent of these extremist groups. Meanwhile, Overseas, conflicts such as the Balkans War and the First Gulf War were stirring up anti-American sentiment. The 1998 U.S. Embassy bombings in Kenya and Tanzania, carried out by Al-Qaeda, further highlighted the growing threat of global terrorism. Despite these warning signs, however, the scale and audacity of the impending 9-11 attacks were beyond anything the world had previously experienced. So, as we delve into the events of 9-11, it's important to keep this backdrop in mind. This was a time of seismic shifts in the global landscape, a time when old threats had faded and new ones were emerging. It was in this climate of change and uncertainty that the stage was set for one of the most devastating acts of terrorism in history. With this context in mind, we can begin to unravel the events of that fateful day. On September 11, 2001, a series of coordinated terrorist attacks shook the world. It was a morning like any other, when out of the clear blue sky, disaster struck. Four passenger airlines taken over by 19 hijackers became weapons of mass destruction. The first plane, American Airlines Flight 11, crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City at 8.46 a.m. Just 16 minutes later, a second plane, United Airlines Flight 175, hit the South Tower. The impact of these crashes caused both towers to collapse within a couple of hours, resulting in a massive loss of life and forever altering the skyline of one of the world's most iconic cities. Meanwhile, another plane, American Airlines Flight 77, was flown into the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia. The fourth plane, United Airlines Flight 93, crashed into a field in Pennsylvania after passengers fought back against the hijackers. 
This plane was believed to be heading for a target in Washington, D.C., potentially the White House or the Capitol building. The immediate aftermath of the attacks was one of chaos and disbelief. Smoke billowed from the wreckage of the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. News outlets around the globe broadcasted images of destruction and despair, capturing the horror of the day in real time. Emergency services rushed to the scene, displaying extraordinary bravery and selflessness in the face of unimaginable danger. On this single day, almost 3,000 people lost their lives. The attacks caused significant damage and ignited fires that burned for days. It was an event of such scale and horror that it left an indelible mark on the American psyche and sent shockwaves around the world. In the wake of the attacks, the world was left in shock and disbelief. The events of September 11, 2001, marked a turning point in modern history, leading to profound changes in global politics, security, and the way we perceive the world. It was a day that showed the worst of humanity, but also its resilience and unity in the face of adversity. These horrific acts were not random, but meticulously planned and executed. That's right, the 9-11's attacks were not the work of lone wolves, but a coordinated effort by an international terrorist group known as Al-Qaeda. The name Al-Qaeda translates to the base in Arabic, signifying its role as a hub for radical Islamic militants. At the helm of this organization was the infamous Osama bin Laden, a wealthy Saudi exile who had declared a holy war, or jihad, against the United States. Bin Laden and his followers harbored a deep-seated resentment for what they perceived as Western imperialism, especially the presence of American military forces in Saudi Arabia, the birthplace of Islam. This resentment was the driving force behind their deadly campaign. They saw the attacks as a way to retaliate against the U.S. and its allies, and to send a chilling message to the world. The targets were no accident. The World Trade Center, a symbol of American economic power, and the Pentagon, a representation of U.S. military might, were carefully chosen for their symbolic significance. But it wasn't just Bin Laden and his inner circle who were responsible. The attacks were carried out by 19 men, most of them from Saudi Arabia. These individuals were not crazed fanatics, but seemingly ordinary men who had been radicalized and trained to become deadly terrorists. They were willing to sacrifice their lives for their cause, a chilling testament to the power of radical ideology. It's important to remember, however, that these individuals and groups do not represent the beliefs and values of the vast majority of Muslims around the world. They are a fringe group whose violent acts and extreme interpretations of Islam are widely rejected by the global Muslim community. So while the 9-11 attacks were the work of a specific group with a specific agenda, they were part of a larger, more complex picture. A picture that includes political, economic, and religious factors, as well as the age-old human capacity for hatred and violence. The world now had a new enemy, international terrorism. And this enemy would prove to be elusive, resilient, and deadly posing a challenge to global security that we continue to grapple with today. Could these attacks have been prevented? A question that has echoed in the minds of many since that fateful September morning. As we delve into the question of whether there were warnings or intelligence that could have prevented the attacks, we find ourselves in a complex maze of information, missed signals, and bureaucratic hurdles. In the months leading up to the attacks, Intelligence agencies around the world were picking up chatter about a major event planned by Al-Qaeda, but the specifics were elusive. The Central Intelligence Agency, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and other agencies had collected pieces of the puzzle. However, the dots were not connected in time to prevent the tragedy. Intelligence reports from as early as 1998 suggested that Al-Qaeda was considering hijacked airlines as weapons, but these reports were lost in the sea of information. The intelligence community, tasked with protecting the nation, faced a Herculean task. With countless threats to assess and manage daily, the challenge was not just in gathering intelligence, but also in deciphering it, in understanding its significance, and in acting upon it. The intelligence failures were not merely a matter of missed signals or lack of information. It was a systemic issue, a failure of imagination to conceive that such a horrific attack could occur on American soil. The agencies were siloed with a lack of communication and information sharing that hindered a comprehensive understanding of the threat. The 9-11 Commission report stated that the most important failure was one of imagination. We had not imagined the kind of attacks that would take place and thus were not prepared to prevent them. This was not a failure of policies, capabilities or management, but of imagination. In hindsight, the signs were there, 
but the magnitude of the threat was underestimated. The intelligence community had pieces of the puzzle but failed to see the bigger picture. This is a sobering reminder of the importance of effective intelligence gathering, analysis, and most importantly, imagination in foreseeing and preventing such catastrophic events. The world was united in its shock, grief, and anger. The global reaction to the 9-11 attacks was one of overwhelming solidarity with the United States. Flags were flown at half-mast across the globe, and world leaders immediately expressed their condemnation of this horrific act of terror. The United Nations Security Council responded swiftly, passing Resolution 1368, which condemned the attacks and expressed readiness to take all necessary steps to respond and combat all forms of terrorism in accordance with the UN Charter. In the days following the attacks, the international community rallied behind the United States. There were countless vigils and memorials, from the streets of London to the Great Wall of China. Donations poured into relief funds from all corners of the world. Countries offered their military and intelligence resources to assist in the investigation and the subsequent war on terror. Diplomatically, the attacks led to a significant realignment. NATO invoked Article 5 for the first time in its history, declaring the attacks to be an attack on all NATO members. This paved the way for the collective military response in Afghanistan. Yet, this global unity wasn't just about military action. There were sweeping changes in international security protocols, particularly in aviation. Countries around the world began to implement stricter controls and share intelligence more freely to prevent similar attacks. The International Police Organization, Interpol, initiated a global alert known as Operation Orange, which involved increased security measures and enhanced cooperation between international law enforcement agencies. The response to 9-11 was a testament to the power of global unity in the face of adversity. Nations set aside their differences to stand against a common enemy, terrorism. International cooperation was at an all-time high, reflecting a shared understanding that the threat of terrorism was not confined to any one country. It was a global issue that required a global solution. In the face of tragedy, the world stood together. The ripple effects of 9-11 were felt far and wide. The immediate consequences were tragic, with thousands of lives lost in the heart of America's financial district and the Pentagon. But the long-term consequences, those stretched well beyond the borders of the United States, reshaping its policies and impacting the world at large. In the aftermath, the United States and its allies launched the War on Terror. This new kind of warfare, without defined battlefields or clear enemies, led the United States into conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq. The objective was to dismantle terrorist networks, but the outcomes were more complex, leading to prolonged military involvement and political instability in the regions. Domestically, the attacks led to a significant shift in U.S. policies, with the establishment of the Department of Homeland Security designed to prevent terrorist attacks within the country. The controversial USA Patriot Act was also enacted, granting law enforcement unprecedented surveillance powers in the name of national security. Critics argue that these measures infringed on civil liberties, marking a significant trade-off between security and freedom. Beyond the US, the consequences of 9-11 were felt globally. The world watched as a new landscape of fear and uncertainty unfolded. Countries around the world tightened their security measures, and the discourse around immigration and Islamophobia became more contentious. The lines between security and liberty, between fear and tolerance, were redrawn in the post-9-11 world. The economic impact was also profound. The attacks caused significant damage to the world economy, with global stock markets plummeting and the airline industry suffering a major blow. The ripple effects were felt across various sectors, from tourism to insurance, and took years to recover. In essence, the consequences of 9-11 were far-reaching and multifaceted, they not only altered the course of history, but also shaped the world we live in today. The events of that fateful day in September 20 years ago have left an indelible mark, a scar that serves as a reminder of the human cost of violence and the resilience of societies in the face of adversity. The world post 9-11 was a changed place. 9-11s marked a turning point in aviation security. Those events of late summer in 2001 fundamentally changed how we view and approach safety in the skies. In the aftermath of 9-11, the world witnessed a complete overhaul of aviation security measures. The United States, in particular, underwent a dramatic transformation. 
The Transportation Security Administration, or TSA, was established by the Aviation and Transportation Security Act signed into law in November 2001. This body was tasked with developing policies to protect U.S. transportation, particularly in airports. Pre-9-11, airport security was largely a matter of metal detectors and X-ray machines, checking for obvious contraband like guns and knives. But the tragic events of that September morning highlighted the need for more rigorous and comprehensive security measures. Suddenly, we were thinking about things like shoe bombs, liquid explosives, and other less obvious threats. So what changed? First, the screening process became more thorough. Passengers now had to remove shoes, belts, and jackets. Liquids were limited to travel-sized containers that could fit in a single, quart-sized zip-top bag. Anything larger had to be checked. Second, there was a significant upgrade in technology. Advanced imaging technology was introduced, capable of detecting non-metallic weapons and explosives. Checked baggage now had to go through explosive detection systems. There was a shift towards risk-based, intelligence-driven procedures, with enhanced screening for those deemed high-risk. Lastly, the role of the Air Marshal Service was expanded. These are armed law enforcement officers on flights to deter and counteract any malicious intent. Their presence was ramped up significantly following the attacks. These measures, while sometimes seen as inconvenient, have proven effective. They have helped prevent attacks and have created an environment where passengers can feel safer while traveling. It's a stark reminder that the world of aviation security is one that must constantly evolve to meet new threats. It's about learning from the past, staying vigilant in the present, and being prepared for the future. Today, we travel in a world forever shaped by the events of 9-11. In the aftermath of the attacks, the 9-11's commission was established. This was no ordinary committee. Formed in late 2002, the 9-11 Commission, officially known as the National Commission on Terrorist Attacks upon the United States, had a monumental task. They were charged with preparing a full and complete account of the circumstances surrounding the September 11th attacks. The bipartisan commission consisted of five Democrats and five Republicans, and it was led by former New Jersey Governor Thomas Keene. Over the course of its existence, the commission interviewed over 1,200 people in 10 countries and reviewed more than two and a half million pages of documents. In July 2004, the commission released its final report. This 567-page document outlined a series of failures by the U.S. government in the lead-up to the attacks. These ranged from a lack of imagination in foreseeing the use of planes as weapons to systemic failures in communication and coordination among different government agencies. The report also contained 41 recommendations aimed at preventing future terrorist attacks. These included suggestions for a major restructuring of the U.S. intelligence community, strengthening of aviation security, and a call for a greater focus on diplomacy and international cooperation. The Commission's findings had significant implications. They led to the creation of the Director of National Intelligence position, a major reorganization of the intelligence community, and significant changes in U.S. foreign and security policy. Yet they also sparked controversy and debate, with some questioning the Commission's methodology and findings. Yet despite the controversies, the 9-11 Commission has left an indelible mark on the American psyche and its security apparatus. It highlighted the need for vigilance, preparedness, and unity in the face of threats to national security. The Commission's report remains the most comprehensive account of the 9-11 attacks. It serves as a sobering reminder of the events of that fateful day and the imperatives for a safer world. The 9-11's attacks marked a turning point in our history. We've journeyed through the past, delving into the key questions that have shaped our understanding of this pivotal event. We've explored the attacks themselves, their shocking impact, and the individuals who orchestrated this tragedy. We've scrutinized the intelligence failures and questioned whether the attacks could have been prevented. We've reflected on the world's response, the profound consequences, and the changes to aviation security. Finally, we've examined the findings of the 9-11 Commission and their implications for the United States' security and counterterrorism efforts. It's crucial to remember that history isn't just about the past. It's about understanding how our world has been shaped and how we can learn from these events to build a better future. As we look back on 9-11s, we are reminded of our resilience, our unity, and our commitment to a safer world. For those interested in diving deeper into the events of 9-11s, there are a multitude of resources available. 
Books such as The Looming Tower by Lawrence Wright and 102 Minutes by Jim Dwyer and Kevin Flynn provide insightful perspectives. Documentaries like 9-11 Inside the Pentagon and The Falling Man shed light on different aspects of the tragedy. Websites like the 9-11 Memorial and AMP Museum offer a wealth of information. Remember, history is a tool for understanding the present. Until next time, keep exploring.